Hello and welcome. I'm Yael Friedman, former director of international programs at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust, and a current educational consultant with the Auschwitz Jewish Center. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the second installment of the Auschwitz Jewish Center's 20th anniversary public program series. Auschwitz is known to many as the ultimate symbol of the Holocaust, but the town of Auschwitz, the Polish name for Auschwitz, has a rich Jewish history that predates the camp. The Auschwitz Jewish Center, which I will also refer to as the AJC, a satellite location of the Museum of Jewish Heritage in Poland, is the only Jewish presence remaining in the vicinity of Auschwitz. The AJC commemorates Auschwitz's Jewish community, preserves Jewish memory in the town, and educates about the contemporary dangers of anti-Semitism and other forms of prejudice. If you missed our first program on November 24th about the Jewish history of the town, you can find it on the Museum of Jewish Heritage's YouTube channel. We will also share a link with you in a follow-up email after today's program. But don't worry, you don't have to have seen that to benefit from today's program. Today, we will be highlighting the important work of the AJC and specifically looking at the evolution of our remembrance projects in a town that no longer has any Jewish residents, a feature common to many Polish towns. Over the past 20 years, the AJC has created meaningful remembrance projects from a museum exhibition to maintenance of the Jewish cemetery to refurbishing the home of the last surviving Jew in Oshwanshim that now houses the popular Cafe Bergson. Most recently, in honor of its 20th anniversary, the AJC commemorated the site of the Great Synagogue with an award-winning memorial park, the first memorial in a public space in the town. Following a brief presentation by the AJC's director, Tomek Kunsevich, about the AJC's projects, we will welcome Barbara Posner to introduce a short clip of her mother, Leah Gleitman, a survivor from Oshvanshim, speaking at the Great Synagogue Memorial Park commemoration in November, 2019. After the video, I will be joined by Barbara and Shlomi Shaked, a grandchild of survivors from Oshvanshim, to discuss the significance of the AJC's work for them as the descendants of survivors from this town. We'll have time for Q&A towards the end of the program. Please feel free to post any questions throughout the program using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. And thank you to those who have already donated to the AJC. We greatly appreciate your support to ensure the continuation of our efforts to create meaningful commemorative and educational programs. We will put a donation link in the chat for those who would like to donate. Today's program is being recorded. We'll send you a link in a follow-up email and we'll post it on the museum's website in the coming days. And without further ado, please join me in welcoming Tomek. Hello and welcome from Poland. Thank you, Al, for the introductions. Uh, I will now uh, start sharing some of the images for my presentation. One moment. Okay, I think this is ready. Um, the work of the Auschwitz Jewish Center can be divided into two main parts. One is Holocaust education, which includes human rights education today. We run such programs for students, teachers, law enforcement, cadets and mids. We strongly believe that the education about this tragic history cannot be limited to the historical facts, but needs to address the mechanisms of exclusion today, whether it is anti-Semitism, racism, or homophobia, with the hope that this can serve as an immunity shot against hatred today. The other one is the commemoration of the destroyed Jewish community in the town next to the site of Auschwitz, in which was 60% Jewish prior to the Holocaust. I will give an, an overview of the most significant remembrance projects of the Auschwitz Jewish Center that have local, national, and international reach. I will be showing some images related to these events as we go through. The first four relate to the Jewish sites we maintain in the town. The others represent our efforts to honor the memory of the Jews of Oshvinchim to a far reaching audience. This is the Hevra Lomde Mishnayot Synagogue, which is the only surviving Jewish house of prayer in Oshvinchim of almost 20 that existed before the war. 
built circa 1913, the Nazis destroyed its interior and used the building as a munitions warehouse. After the Shoah, Jewish survivors in Oshvinchim once again used it as a synagogue. In the 1950s, the last Jews of Oshvinchim left and the synagogue stood empty. In the 1970s, the communist government nationalized the building and turned it into a carpet warehouse. In 1998, the synagogue became the first Jewish communal property to be returned to a Jewish community in Poland. And the recipients of the property, the Bielsko Biała Jewish community, donated the synagogue to the Auschwitz Jewish Center. We restored the building to its pre-war condition and it was reopened in September 2000. As the only Jewish house of worship near Auschwitz-Birkenau, the Hebrelande Mishnayot provides visitors with a sanctuary for prayer and reflection. And here we can see a photograph of, uh, of a service led by the chief rabbi of France, uh, Haim Korsia. In the home of the Kornreich family, the Jewish Museum commemorates and educates about the Jewish history of Oshvinchim. Through the core exhibition, Oshpitzin, the name the local Jews call their town, visitors can explore the lives of the Jews of Oshvinchim through photographs, artifacts, and survivor testimony. In the exhibition, photographs of individuals and families, documents and artifacts from local Jewish organizations and businesses, and the Judaica excavated in 2004 from beneath the site of the Oshvinchim Great Synagogue bring life to the vital Jewish town that Oshvinchim once was. The Jewish cemetery in Oshvinchim was established at the end of the 18th century and completely destroyed during the Holocaust with the Matzavot used as construction material. After the war, the cemetery was rebuilt by a handful of survivors. Today, it's part of our education programs and it's maintained by our volunteers and program participants. It consists of about 800 tombstones. We published a book about it, which can be purchased at our online store. In January, the cemetery was desecrated with Nazi symbols spray painted on the wall. We are grateful for the swift response from local officials and law enforcement who painted over it and promptly identified and arrested the perpetrators. Shimon Kluger was the last Jewish resident of Oshvinchim. His house was donated to us by his relatives. Through generous support, we not only saved it from the collapse, but turned it into a unique meeting and education place for residents and visitors to Oshvinchim called Cafe Bergson. It is located at the back of the Hebra Lamdei Mishnayot Synagogue and the Jewish Museum. And it's a mix of modern design with original elements of the historic Jewish home. In addition to the site we maintain, we actively include the local community in our remembrance efforts. For example, in 2008, we held a ceremony commemorating the 67th anniversary of the deportation of Jews from Oshvinchim by the Nazis. The event was well attended by the local community. A word, Zohrim Pamintame, was created out of candles and a postcard with this image was sent out to survivors in Israel. We have also published four books which present the history of the Jews of Oshvinchim in a unique, unconventional, unconventional and popular way. The first was Oshpitzin, a guide to the Jewish history of Oshvinchim, which takes the form of a walk around the city following the footsteps of Jewish residents. Another Oshpitzin history of Jewish Oshvinchim exhibition catalog presents the highlights from our permanent exhibition, including objects, documents, and photographs. The third one is Oshvinchim stories, which includes seven authentic stories to told in the form of graphic novels, focusing on the relations between Jews and non-Jews in the town. The most recent publication is the Jewish Cemetery in Oshvinchim, History, Symbols, and Nature. The book combines the history of the cemetery with basic knowledge of the mat Matzeva symbols, funeral rituals, and the unique light wildlife of the place. Even before the pandemic, we were adapting our remembrance efforts in the digital space. The Oshpitzin exhibit on the Google Arts and Culture platform is a virtual format of our core exhibition. 
It was launched on January 27th, 2017, the 72nd anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau camp. Thanks to advanced technology, everyone all over the world can view high quality photos and personal documents and read the exhibition creator's commentary on the material that tells the story of over 400 years of Jewish presence in Oshvinchim. We have, also, we have also an interactive app that features an in-depth look at our exhibition and related Jewish sites around Oshvinchim. You can use the app to go on a virtual walking tour to learn about the sites of former synagogues, factories, and homes, as well as people associated with them. The most advanced technology also allows you to see three-dimensional models of buildings that no longer exist, the Great Synagogue and the Haberfeld Factory in augmented reality. Currently, due to the pandemic, it is for most the only possible way to visit us. The app is in Polish, English, German, and Hebrew. Lastly, I want to show you our most recent remembrance project our first permanent memorial in a public space in the town. For centuries, the great synagogue was the center of the Jewish life in the town. Following the Nazi occupation, the great synagogue was set ablaze and destroyed by the Germans on the night of November 29, 1939. The site remained an empty lot for a long time. Thanks to the generous support of the town of Oshvinchim, as well as institutional and private donors, from Poland and beyond, we have transformed this space into a memorial park. On November 28, 2019, we inaugurated the Great Synagogue Memorial Park and paid tribute to the Jewish community of Oshvinchim through a special program with a concert and candlelit ceremony. Oshvinchim's mayor, around 200 local citizens and some 50 descendants of Oshvinchim Jews attended the, the dedication. This park marks the town's commitment to remembering the rich and vibrant Jewish history of Oshvinchim. We are grateful that the park has received several architectural awards and was featured in Polish and international design magazines. Uh, I would like to end my presentation with a clip from the opening of the park in which the son of a survivor, Harry Turner, reads a testimony about the synagogue. The testimonies in English will be read by Harry Turner from Sweden. Uh, the interior was very impressive. The walls were covered with marvelous frescoes, all flowing together under the rounded dome, making the ceiling into a form of a chupa above. The ceiling and its coloration looked like the blue sky with, scat with scattered shining stars and the 12 signs of the zodiac. The bima was raised and closed by a screen and covered by a canopy fashioned of rough iron, brass, and carved wood. The lining was dim, wax candles were carefully lit, for electricity had not yet reached Otrenchim and its environs. Of all the city's building, electric light was first installed in the great synagogue and was first used during the high holiday services in 5,686, which is 1925. One night at the beginning of winter, 5,739 and 40, all of this splendor came to an end. The city was patrolled by uniformed units of special German forces. May their memory be blotted out. It seemed they were well practiced, especially in the destruction of synagogues, and silently approached and set the building ablaze. The inferno, the inferno was great, but no help came. The Germans had surrounded the area and with guns drawn threatened to shoot anyone daring to leave their houses. They called this a strict night curfew. The Jews could only weep from, 
f from afar at this blaze which consumed the house of the Lord. And this writing is from Chaim Woltnerman, Sefer Oshpitzin, written in Jerusalem, 1977. Thank you. I would like to invite now Barbara Posner to introduce a short clip of her mother, Leah Gleitman, a survivor from Oshvinchim, sharing testimony at the Great Synagogue Memorial Park inauguration. Hello, everybody. You are about to watch a clip of my mother speaking during the commemoration ceremony from November 2019. My mother, Lea Gleitman, was born in Oshvienshim and survived the Holocaust. At the commemoration, we were 25 members of my family from Israel, the US, Sweden, Denmark, and Belgium, all of us descendants of mother's grandparents, Schloime and Martel Posner, blessed be their memory, who lived in the town. Also our friends, Harry, that you just saw, and Yvonne Turner, whose father was from Oshvienshim, were there. We had all come for this, for us, very important event. I must also let you know that the day before, Mother celebrated her 95th birthday at the hotel in her beloved Oshvienshim, together with all of us and with the staff from Auschwitz Jewish Center. Yes. These were truly unforgettable days. Thank you. My name is Leah Gleitman. I was born in this town as Leah Posner at Platz Kosciuszki 17, less than a 10 minutes walk from here. On 27th on November 1924, so yesterday was my 95th birthday. It's a very emotional experience for me to, be, to stand here and talk in my beloved Oshvienzim or Oshpetzin. It's a Jewish name used by most Jews. Up until the Second World War, Ospitzin had 12,000 inhibit inhabitants, of which seven to eight were Jews. Seven to eight thousand. Seven to eight thousand. Thank you. The town has always been very important to me. Here lived everyone I loved, and I had a very happy childhood here, surrounded by all of my father Joines wider family. My mother, Sprenza, came from Kshanov. I have wonderful memories of Oshvienshim, which was a vibrant town. The holiday of Simchat Torah is another beautiful memory. Simchat Torah is a celebration of when we received the Torah, our holy scripture. The Jews of Oshvienshim danced in the street carrying the Torah. Many of the streets surrounded Guvnerinek, the large town square, were filled with happy Jewish children of all ages. This was a party for the children. Of all of my whole beloved family, an extended family, only my sister Miriam, my cousin Rahel, and I survived. 
and my uncle Moshe with his family in Denmark. All the other were guests to death in Auschwitz, the town in which they were born and lived. Mad Miriam and Rahel passed away a few years ago. All of us here miss them so very much. I no longer have anyone who shared my past that I can share my memories with. But here today, I can share my memories of my beloved family with all of you. Let them not be for forgotten. Wow, that was very powerful. Thank you, Barbara, for introducing the video of your mother's testimony. Um, and that was only a short clip from the event. We'll send out a link to the video of the full event in an email with the recording of today's program. Um, the, the clip with Harry Turner reading from the Yisker book at the commemoration is also part of that full video. So I wanna start our conversation uh, with Barbara and Shlomi with a little bit of additional context. Barbara, when you get a chance, if you can turn, perfect, thank you. Um, about 90% of Ostrantium's Jews were killed during the Holocaust. After the Holocaust, very few survivors returned to the town. And by the late 1950s, almost all of those survivors left Poland. Shimon Kluger, the last Jew living in Ostrantium, passed away in 2000, the same year the AJC opened. Today, there are no Jews living in the town. We are very grateful to maintain relationships with children, grandchildren, and relatives of Jews from Oshvenshin. We're fortunate to be joined today by Barbara, a 2G, and Shlomi, a 3G. Uh, and I would like to start out by thanking you both for staying up late. Barbara lives in Sweden, and Shlomi currently lives in Krakow. So thank you for joining us for this program. We are very appreciative of your time. Um, I would love to start with you guys sharing um, about your connection to the town of Oshvanshim and to the AJC. Um, so Barbara, you wanna start? Uh, yes, I would like to tell you shortly my family story. And I now realize that I will be repeating some of what my mother said in her speech. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But shortly, my family story. My mother was born in Oshvenshim in 1924 as Lea Posner. She survived forced labor in the ghetto of her then hometown, Sosnovets. After that, a forced labor camp in Greben by Strigau. Then a death march from there to the concentration camp Bergen-Belsen. There she was liberated by the British army. Apart from my mother, only her sister Miriam and cousin Rachel survived. The absolute majority of mother's family were gassed to death directly after their arrival to Auschwitz in August 1942, only a few kilometers from their home. I would like to mention that mother has very happy memories of her childhood in Oshvenshim. There she was surrounded by her father's family with seven siblings and their families with lots of cousins that were mother's best friends. My family had lived in the town for several generations also important to mention is that anti-Semitism in Oshvenshim was not very noticeable. And now to the photo that you all can see. This picture was taken in 1938 in Oshvenshim. 
actually in the house that you see behind me with the address Platz Kosciuszki number 16, very close to the main square. This was a very Jewish neighborhood. Here lived mother's grandfather and grandmother Schloime and Martel Posner. And the occasion on the photo is a family gathering after the wedding of mother's on Sarka, which is a, a nickname for Sarah. Uh, I will not go into more details than that. I only want to tell you that mother is on the top uh, left corner, mother here, top left corner. I think we look a bit alike. And her cousin Rachel is on the top right. And those two from this photo are the only ones that survived. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to ask Shlomi the same question about your connection to Oshvinshim and the AJC. Yeah, of course. So um, first of all, I would say that we have quite simple, very common connection, Barbara and I. Uh, also, my mother actually was born in Ashvienchim, so it's a very close connection. But referring a bit back, both of my grandparents, uh, Rivka Greenbaum and Shlomo Kuperman, were born in, uh, in Ashvienchim. I believe that you can also show the photos to just uh, to describe what I'm talking about. Um, both, um, well, this is actually, if you can move to the second one, um, another one, this is uh, what I described. Okay, wonderful. So this is actually my grandmother, uh, Rivka Greenbaum. This is a photo just few years before the beginning of the Second World War. Uh, she was part of the youth movement Akiva. Maybe for the Hebrew readers, you can see very small, like Kvutsa Neshel. She was a, a guide and uh, in this youth movement, in the Zionist youth movement. Uh, although the family was very, very religious, but she gained general education and she was um, in very, very vibrant cultural life of Oshvienshim, of the youth movement. Uh, my grandfather, Shlomo Kuperman, that I'm named after him, my name is Shlomi, um, also was part of the Zionist, of the youth movements, but uh, generally moving on, making it a bit shorter about the beginning of the war, uh, my grandfather managed to escape from, from Poland bo with both of his brothers, uh, ending eventually in where is now Uzbekistan. But my grandmother that you can see in the photo here, uh, she was not as lucky, I would say, and she was very similar to Barbara's family. She was sent uh, to the ghetto in a city not far from Oshvienshim, and from there she survived many concentration camps, labor camps, and uh, very similar to Barbara's story as well, uh, she was liberated from Bergen-Belsen in 1945. Uh, both of my grandparents came back uh, to Oshvienshim after the war and got married after the war. And as I mentioned, my mother was born, uh, one of a uh, few Jewish kids to be born in Oshvienshim after the Second World War. And actually they lived in Oshvienshim quite late till 1962. They were among the last Jewish family to remain in the town of Oshvienshim. And in 1962, they immigrated, made Aliyah to, to Israel. And um, talking a bit more about my grandfather that I'm named after him, it's, I think, interesting to, to know or to say that since um, so like, few people survived from the Jewish community of Hoshvian Chims, once they came back, so he was the last, I, I like to call it like the unofficial, as you can see it here in the photo, just after the liberation, you know, the, infam the, the known gate of Birkenau, it's of course colored. Uh, you can see how skinny he was when he came back from from his you know exile, I would say, in Uzbekistan. Um, but he was the last person, I would say, to lead the prayers of the Jewish community of Oshvienshim uh, in the synagogue that is now part of the Jewish Museum, uh, you know, the Auschwitz Jewish Center. So um, I would say that this is maybe one of the reasons. Uh, why uh, I feel such a strong connection to, to this place as Dallas Jewish Center and the Jewish history of Hoshvienshim. 
And here as well, you can see my mother, actually, the young, the young girl, with both of my grandparents, Shlomo Kuperman on the left, my grandmother, Rivka Greenbaum. Maybe you can recognize it again in, in, in Birkenau, just next to the ruined crematorium, if you visited the camps. Um, my grandmother was asked just after the war, actually, by where there were few American tourists, actually, that came um, to Oshvienshim to visit the camps, actually, nearby. So she was asked by the town hall to give them tours. So in, uh, when it was not yet, let's say, such a known museum as it is today, I would say. And um, so this is a photo from the camp there. And you can maybe see in my grandfather's face. It, I think it has a lot of meaning. Uh, this horrible place. And my mother always said that she remembers going there so, so young. And, and once we came back, she never agreed, and she still never agreed, to enter the camps, to now the museum. So you can see it here. Thank, Thank you, you both. Um, I think that the, the AJC um, is a unique place in Oshwenshim and I think we're very lucky to be able to hear from you about what this means for you personally. Um, Barbara, I'd like to ask you first and then Shlomi, I'll ask you, um, when did you first visit Oshwenshim and how did you feel that first time about returning to a place that is so part of your heritage? Um, I could say that some Polish Jews never want to go back to survive the Holocaust, never want to, wanted to go back to Poland. My mother is not one of those. She has always liked to come back for sentimental reasons. So she and I uh, made a trip to Poland together in 1976. And uh, that is why, uh, that is when I was in Oshwienshim for the first time. And my mother's house or home was still standing then. And to be honest, I don't have that strong memories uh, from that time. I just remember that it, it was very important uh, to me. Uh, and we have pictures from from uh, that year, from that visit. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. I'd love to follow up on that briefly. Um, since you have visited several times before the AJC uh, was open, um, I wonder how it feels to return now that that you've come very often and that the AJC exists. Um. I have been uh, three more times in Oshvienshim in 2016, 18, and uh, 19. And uh, the older I get, the more important this connection with Oshvienshim gets. Uh, and um, I feel that my bonds to my family that I have never had a chance to meet they grow stronger and it's very emotional to walk the same streets as they walked and to visit the building behind me where mother's grandfather lived and mother's own house no more exists. And for each visit, I also feel more connected to the town. And uh, now that there is a Auschwitz Jewish Center, uh, it means to me that there is something, somebody who in a dignified manner preserves the memory of my family and the history of the Jewish inhabitants of the town. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, Shlomi, I want to ask you the, the same thing. When was the first time you came to Oshantrum and what was that experience like for you? The first time was in 2006. And it was actually, it was a very interesting trip since it was the first time that my mother came back uh, to Poland, to visit Poland after more than 40 years. And it was very exciting to go back to the place that she always spoke about or my grandmother uh, described. And I do remember that it's like coming back to a place that like you put a pause on a movie and then you put play again. 
and then you can like see live the places that you heard about and it was incredible also to meet the staff by the way of the Auschwitz Jewish Center which was incredible and and just to see live the stories that I've been told or I've heard about um, since I remember myself since it's always been interesting for me to know more about my my family history and this is uh, was since then following from what Barbara said I think since then I came almost every year once a year uh, to Shu and Jim I can also add this is how we met Yael that I was also a volunteer uh, for a few months in 2013 I guess uh, in the Auschwitz Jewish Center uh, which was amazing for me it was kind of um, I call it always closing a circle since as I mentioned my grandfather was kind of the unofficial rabbi, I call it, or the person, the last person to, to lead the prayers in the synagogue that is now part of the museum, and to be there guiding tourists or locals um, about the Jewish history, about the museum, about the synagogue, was for me very meaningful. And I'm very happy that I had this meaningful chance to, as I said, to kind of close the circle and, and had this meaningful experience. Thank you. Uh, we're getting some questions from me about how you ended up back in Krakow, if you want to address that quickly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's a, I, I've been asked this question many times. So I'm a <laughs> um, few years ago, I came here for my MA studies. Uh, it was a few years ago. And just when I graduated my MA studies, I got an offer to, to actually join the university in a sense of being a lecturer. And nowadays I'm teaching actually Hebrew in the Jewish studies department uh, here in Krakow in the Agalonian University, which is a very interesting topic for itself. And this is how I ended up for now, at least in Krakow and um, very close to Oshvienchi. So I visit quite often, at least before COVID times. And um, so this is how I, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so both of you, your, your families left Oshvienchi um, and Barbara, you don't have any family living in Poland today. And Shlomi, you moved to Poland recently, but your family lives outside of Poland. Um, and I'd love to hear from you why it's important for you as uh, descendants of survivors uh, that there is sustained preservation of Jewish memory in Auschwitz. Um, feel free, whoever wants to take that one first. Okay, I, we can take turns. Turns. Uh, to me, it's it's like a rehabilitation, the Auschwitz Jewish Center, because otherwise, it's as if my family and their neighbors didn't leave any trace, as if they never lived there. And just as important is it to tell the history of Jewish life to today's inhabitants of Auschwitz and to coming generations. Thank you. I can say, like relating to what Barbara just said, that I really think that the Auschwitz Jewish Center is the institution that is making the difference between the possible, I would say, disappearance of the Jewish history of Auschwitz and I would say keeping it Jewish history alive. And I really believe that without them, without the AJC, the Auschwitz Jewish Center, my family history, and many more um, stories from the Jewish Auschwitz would not be told and remembered. And I really think that we live nowadays, I would say in special times that we are still fortunate enough to have Holocaust survivors. And I think also the, the museum is hosting uh, uh, Holocaust survivors and that so we can hear their stories. But in 10, 20 years, we will not Unfortunately, we will not have any more Holocaust survivors to the first hand that had the first hand um, experience of, of the Holocaust. And thanks to this museum in Oshienshi, I believe that it's one important chain of never again of remembering of bringing back the Jewish history back alive. Like I visited many times the museum and every time a, once you can see the visitors listening to the stories and, and, and you can see the faces of the visitors uh, mm -hmm. learning about something that is might, might have been forgotten without the museum. So this is something that is really important for the audience that we have today to know that without them, without the museum, um, 
my family history would be forgotten and thousands more would be forgotten. And this is something we as a Jews or humans in general have to be thankful for. So this is something that is very important to mention. Thank you both. Shlomi, I'd love to follow up and hear from you how you feel the AJC has managed to preserve your family's heritage or your family's memory. Part of, I would say the education department, I would say of the museum. And they have wonderful workshops that, especially for you know, teenagers, or I would say more about teenagers that, you know, we all say that education is the future, but I really think it's not a cliche, but this is something that is really, really important. And as part of the, those workshops, the, the staff is doing, you know, they bring in photos. And one of those photos, as far as I remember, this is of my grandmother when she was young. And, and they have to think, who is this lady from? Or who, who was she? And, and, and this is something that is very, I would say, interactive for, for teenagers. But it's not only this, like if you will go to visit the museum, you could see many photos. And, and, um, and some of those photos are from my family. And there are small inscriptions of, of who their people, those people are. And, and then in the tours, you also, I guess, nowadays also talk about those people. So my family or in other family stories. So it's something that thanks to the museum, this is something that brought back to life, not only just, you know, for me. Thank you. And Barbara is, I'd like to ask you the same question. How do you feel the AJC has managed to, to share your family story? Yeah, I, I think it's fine. And I like the combination of text and photos. I mean, both are equally important. And, and the names mentioning each and every name is very important. Thank you. Thank you. And one thing we didn't see in the clip of your mother, but one, one of the powerful elements of her testimony from the commemoration was her listing her family members. Um, so I think that very much speaks to your feelings about the work of the AJC as well. Mm -hmm. I wanna remind um, all our, our viewers, feel free to send in questions through the Q&A function. Um, I think the, the newest and most public memorial is uh, the, the site at the site of the Great Synagogue. And um, Barbara, we know you attended and Shlomi, I know you've seen it. Um, and this for me as somebody who's visited the Auschwitz-Druh Center and Auschwitz-Druh uh, for several years is a really powerful symbol of where the, where the town is at, that there can be such a public memorial in a public space. Um, but I'd love to hear from you um, what this memorial park symbolizes as a descendant of a Holocaust survivor from Ostrich. Okay, is it me now? <laughs> Whoever wants to go you can first. Start. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that together with the memorial monument in the park with all the names of former Jewish inhabitants, including my family members, it's like a tombstone. Uh, it's showing we were here. And it's a way for me to show my ancestors, we have not forgotten you. And it's an obvious place for me to visit every time I'm in town. Thank you. And Thank very you. relating to, to Barbara, it's just, I think it's a continuation because this place was empty, really. There was till November, 2019, and there was an empty space and there was a sign and there was nothing more. And once we had the tours, it was very difficult to, to explain how important this building was, the great synagogue to the local Jewish community. And now that you have this really amazing, and I really encourage people to look in this, in this memorial. It's really incredible. And, and as far as I remember, one of few prizes. Um, it's finally giving the proper respect that this place deserves. Um, for as, as many testimony of people like mentioned that this was the heart the very beating heart of their, I would say, religious Jewish, religious Jewish community of, of Oshvienshim in the Jewish street, which was known as the Jewish street. 
And thanks to the, the museum, now there is a proper place that you can visit and to remember that this place used to house such a building that was extremely important for probably every Jew that lived in Oshvinjim or its vicinity. And um, this is something that is really important We're relating to Barbara. And I would just summarize by saying this is a continuation of memory and just bringing back to life something that was gone for so many centuries. Thank you. I want to add that um, at the commemoration, there were a lot of local residents who joined, um, including the mayor. Um, so it was really special to have a Shrenshim's community be a part of this uh, commemoration event. Um, I also want to add that a model of the Great Synagogue um, is in the Auschwitz exhibition that is currently at the Museum of Jewish Heritage. Uh, so I encourage you, if you're in the area, you, you should go see it. Um, and again, the, the design is based on the words of survivors um, from the Yisker book. Um, and so we, we really use, use the, the words of survivors and their memories to frame uh, our remembrance projects. Um, I want to be able to answer some of the questions that we've received. So I'm going to invite Tomek to rejoin us so he can help field some of the questions. Thank you. Um, and there, there are many questions. Um, I think what, one of the big questions right now um, I think Tomek, maybe you can take a, the first stab at it, is how you found, um, or how Oshrenshim's community um, has responded to AJC's remembrance projects and, and also educational projects um, in the larger context of sort of the, the politicization of memory that's happening in Poland right now and how you've managed to deal with that. Sure, um, well, Poland um, is very divided. And I think in this respect, I think somewhat similar to the United States. So on one hand, we have uh, quite a big group of people who want to explore this history, who want to look at the history in an inc inclusive way, who want to um, look at the history as, as something complicated, as something nuanced, bad stories, good stories. And in the case of a strange team, it's sort of the same, right? I mean, throughout these 20 years, we've had a lot of very positive uh, developments, a lot of interest, uh, a lot of teachers uh, who bring their students to our center, to the synagogue, to our programs, uh, which deal with discrimination, hatred, um, also law enforcement teachers, so, and also the town itself that throughout these years, uh, there, there, there has been several mayors and uh, actually all of them uh, have been uh, supportive. And uh, all of our projects that we have created uh, have received significant uh, support, financial support from the town. This includes the Memorial Park, which was mentioned, but also the uh, core exhibition, the publications which were mentioned Every year uh, we have, we, we receive uh, funding for these projects. And, uh, and you know, is not, is not, a, is not an exception. There was a question in the chat uh, regarding this, um, this politicization uh, of, of memory or, or these sort of negative trends or, or trying maybe to cover up some of the uh, negative parts of the history regarding uh, the, the, the Jewish uh, inhabitants of Poland and the Jewish history in Poland. But as I said, Poland is very divided. Uh, there's a very strong segment of the Polish society that wants to learn about this history, is ready to confront anti-Semitism and is ready to fight anti-Semitism and any other form of prejudice. Thank you. Um, I think Continuing with the, the theme of anti-Semitism, um, there are several questions here for both Barbara and Shlomi about whether your relatives or what were the Jewish non-Jewish relations between your relatives uh, and their neighbors in, in the town? 
I might start. Um, generally, <laughs> no. generally speaking, I heard honestly only good things about the neighbors before the war and after the war. I also saw a question about after the war with my grandparents. Um, they were treated very well. I know there were many stories about different ways that Jews were let's say, welcomed kind of by, by the local community. But, but my family was always, from what I heard, very welcomed in, in, by, by local residents of Oshkenshim. And also generally, like uh, part of my family was saved by Christian Poles during the war, like righteous among the nations. So, so my family history is very, um, I would say linked to the um, maybe positive side of the um, shared life that Jews and Christians had before the war in Poland. Um, so I never heard any bad comment from either my mother who was born after the war or my grandmother uh, about their, their connections with the local you know, residents of Shivinchim before or after the war. So in this case. Thank you. Barbara, I know you mentioned it briefly, but do you want to add anything about your mother's experience before the war? Uh, yes, she she went uh, to a Polish school. These were her first school years. And uh, she has always mentioned that anti-Semitism wasn't very noticeable. And she played with non-Jewish children in the streets, uh, but people, Jews and non-Jews didn't really socialize in each other's homes. So that's what she has uh, told me. But there were business relations and, and other relations, but not really in each other's homes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Shalmi, there are a few questions about um, what, why your grandparents decided to move back to Oshkanshim and stay there. Um, and then leave in 1962. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, we have to remember that for them, Oshvinchim was home. As home is for every one of the attendants is different place in the world, but for them it was home. And you are trying to come back home. Um, and they decided to stay. And I saw a question why they left to Israel so late. And the answer is that because my grandfather used to work in the finance department in one of the biggest uh, factories and still existing in factories in Oshkenshi. And under the communist rule of Poland, so not everyone could leave the country whenever they wanted to. And although they wanted to leave much earlier to Israel, they couldn't. Only in 1962, they got the permission to leave. So this is the reason why they left, I would say quite late or very late comparing to other people. Um, so this is the reason why um, they left quite late comparing to other Jewish residents of Oshvinji. Thank you. Um, then there, there's a, also another question for Shlomi about what is your experience um, today in Poland, um, grant, given that you teach Hebrew um, and that you're very involved working with the AJC. Uh, you just did a program um, with an Israeli journalist about the history of Oshvenshim. Um, so what has your experience in Poland been with that? I think it's very, I would say that the answer will be very similar to Tomek's answer. Um, my experience, I would say is very positive. I have many friends, most of them are not Jewish, that are very involved, I would say, in the local Jewish life. And you can see it in the local JCC, in Jewish Community Center, that almost all the volunteers there are non-Jews um, and they are taking an important part of, of the current Jewish life. And as Tomek said, um, there is a very big interest of local residents, I would say, of, of Christian Poles that in the Jewish history and Jewish culture. And if you will visit Krakow one day, um, you will see it in the former Jewish uh, quarter. And as, as you mentioned, since I'm also teaching Hebrew uh, in the university, I would say that 95% of my students are not Jewish. And this is by itself is very interesting that people who has just no Jewish background or just very interested are coming from small villages or small towns that used to be, as we call it in Yiddish, or major, that had majority of Jewish residents before the war. 
and uh, they were just interested of what was this Jewish history or what, who were those people who just you know lived there for centuries and then metaphorically disappeared from from from, from this town. And I think it's a very interesting thing to see here in Poland, like this growing interest that is going on, I guess, maybe Tomek, of course, has better perspective than me, since the fall of communism all the way till now, uh, of the growing interest of, of Jewish culture, Jewish history, Jewish life. And I really think that thanks to those people, I would say non-Jews who, who cares about the Jewish history, the Jewish culture, we have uh, I would say quite vibrant Jewish life here in Krakow, of course, comparing to the past. And I think my, my Jewish Polish friends can, can say the same, that thanks to those amazing people, also compare, like talking about the Auschwitz Jewish Center, right? They're doing, of course, dealing with amaz amazing things in a cultural way or history way. Um, without everyone involved in this, it, it just would not be the same here in a sense of Jewish life and Jewish culture. Thank you. Um, I'm mindful of the time. We only have two minutes left. So I want to ask Barbara and Shlomi if uh, you have any final thoughts you want to share with our audience today. Well, I simply want to say, uh, do not forget Oshvenshim or Ushpetsin, as it was called in Yiddish. Remember its Jewish inhabitants. Remember my family the descendants of Schleume and Martel Posner. Thank you. Thank you. And I would say um, that to the audience today that um, I think all of us here try to show you how important the museum is, the Auschwitz Jewish Center. And if you might just very, you know, on a very personal note to consider to donate really everything might possible. And I think you can see the, the, the link right in the chat. Um, I really, really consider the museum and its stuff as let's say really the main source of memory or the, the most important, I would say institution for me personally that preserves my family history. And as I said, in the beginning of our meeting, this is, really um, preserving the Jewish memory of Oshivinshim from disappearing from so like comparing to so many other Jewish communities in Europe that disappeared during the Holocaust. Uh, they are preventing it from happening. So if you can donate anything, anything if possible from, from you, it will be, I guess, very helpful for them. And thank you for, for you, Yael, and, and for the amazing staff of the Auschwitz Jewish Center for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Barbara and Shlomi, for sharing your family stories and what the AJC means to you. Uh, and thank you to Tomek for giving us a brief overview of the AJC's remembrance projects and the ways we continue to honor the memory of Oshvenshim's Jewish community. As Leah said at the Great Synagogue Commemoration when speaking about her family, let them not be forgotten. And this is precisely what drives our efforts and the work we do at the AJC. So thank you all for joining us today and for your support to preserve the Jewish memory of the town. Um, I, I know that the link to donate has been put in and I appreciate Shlomi's plug. Um, I also encourage you to follow us on social media at Oshpitzin Museum uh, to stay updated on the AJC, our collection and our events and our programs. Um, and we've also put the link, put the links to those in our chat. Um, and we hope you will come visit us when it is safe to travel again. Thank you.